Hello, we've just gotten to the beach and it's lovely, but it's also crowded. Um, my parents booked this beach house and just said, okay, we've got a house, it's paid for, all the kids and grandkids that want to come, come. We'll all pile in. So there are 11 of us in this house, which means that it is noisy. So you will find me anywhere I can <laughs> film for this for this uh, vlog. But I've started The Grace of Kings and it's fantastic. I'm only 82 pages into it and I love it. I don't know, so Kin Lu is an author that I've read some of his short stories before this. Um, again, Bookborn recommended uh, Kin Lu to me. She just felt convinced that I would enjoy his work. So I started with his short stories and now I'm this is my first novel by him, but I was blown away by his short stories. I was blown away by how much impact he could tuck into so few pages. And I definitely am feeling that way about Grace of Kings right now. Grace of Kings so far is doing everything wrong by my standards, everything. Um, in the very beginning, big, massive uh, scope of world and of characters that are just one after another being introduced. But actually, you know what? I'm gonna take that back. He's not doing everything wrong because his world building is pretty impeccable. Because while yes, he's introducing you to a lot all in the beginning, he's doing it in a non-info dumpy way. He's doing it in the most cohesive, um, beautiful, so lovely to read about way where it just feels like we're watching a scene unfold and learning about the world at the same time and there's no halting of progression that I've identified to build a world. It just feels so like, okay, now let's let's create this scene and then you're, you happen to be creating the world along with the scene. Oh my goodness, I love it. But beyond that he's doing everything wrong uh largely it's to do with his uh pacing and his character work but i love it it's amazing so let me explain he's doing everything in a way that on paper i would say oh i would hate that but in in application it's unbelievable it's so good ken Liu is time after time again doing things that I think I should hate but he does it so well that it works so well so he'll introduce a character okay I'll give you an example there's this woman who I love who is introduced she's her family is trying to find her husband and she's got a matchmaker and she doesn't feel like dealing with it all and then in that chapter she meets a man and at the end of that chapter so like three pages they're married and I loved it. I was rooting for them. By the end of the chapter, I was celebrating. I was so excited. I was like, this is the perfect couple. They're the best in the world. I'm so happy they're married now. I don't even like romance. It wasn't like a standard romance. It was about three or four pages long. But you see what I mean? It's like, he can make me so invested in a storyline and in characters and the relationships within those characters so fast, like unreasonably fast. He doesn't waste his words. Every word, every sentence has so much impact. There's scenes of characters being introduced and dying that gut me. There's flashbacks that don't, they aren't long enough and yet he packs an entire story in that flashback that is so compelling that by the end of it I know these people, I'm invested in their plight, and I'm moved by what they've been through. That doesn't make sense! Like to my measly little reader brain it doesn't make sense to me that it's humanly possible to pack this much impact into such tiny little scenes. I still, there's still so many characters and I'm sure there's so many more to be introduced to, but I just wanted to start the vlog by screaming at you about how I'm, I love this. I love the beginning of this book. It's very dense. It's very, there's a lot that you have to take slowly. Uh, I'm not taking notes, but you know, I'm I'm reading this one very, very slowly. I'm taking in the characters. I'm taking in what's being told to me. I'm taking time after each chapter to reflect on this conflict that's being built up very slowly. I'm just taking my time with it because it's a lot. The author is expecting a lot of you here at the beginning to 
to take in and to understand and to remember. Brittany told me that a lot of people, I was talking to Brittany about this book, Brittany told me that a lot of people uh, are very, they feel like book one it reads like a history book and very put off by the beginning of, of book one, but everybody tells them just give it time because it builds and it becomes one of the greatest series. And I just can't believe that. I mean, I can believe that because it is very dense and I totally understand why people would say it reads like a history book, but if I'm loving it this much now and it only gets better, man, I'm, I'm happy. Welcome to the vlog. and 24 pages into The Grace of Kings and that's near the halfway point. I have a little bookmark here to show me when the next section starts. I love it. I realized in the last clip I didn't tell you what the book was about so let me try. In the beginning of the book an empire is um, building its empire. It's taking over lands, taking away their languages and or their individual languages and creating like a common tongue, taking away certain things just to make it easy for them to rule. And then we have a time jump, something like seven years, and then it's these groups of people, these uh, lands that are rebelling, rebelling, they're rising up because it's been a short enough amount of time that they remember, a lot of them remember what it was like when they were free, when they weren't, when they hadn't been taken over by this empire. So we're following a lot of perspectives, a lot of perspectives. We're following the emperor who took over and then many other people. We're following characters that started with humble beginnings and have risen up to being a duke or something of the like. Uh, we're following characters that were that grew up in a very uh, wealthy, prosperous uh, home and are also in these positions of power. I think the main core most important perspectives that I identify at the moment are Cooney, uh, who is the one that rose up to become a duke and he's now in a leadership role in this rebellion. Uh, we have Jaya, his wife, who I love so much and who is just very wise. <laughs> Every time she's on page, she's fun, she's funny, she's wise. Cooney is inspiring and he's chill. He's a, he's supposed to be this leader and everybody wants him to, okay, lead our people, be formal. And he's just like laughing when there's smear campaigns about him. And he's like, ah, they made, they drew me as a woman. That's funny. Like he just, nothing phases him, but every, but that's not true that nothing phases him. He's very affected by the effects of war. But as far as the pride issues, so far, nothing phases him. Uh, and then uh, um, Mata, Mata uh, is another one that's very important. His relationship with Cooney that he's building up, the ties that they're having, this brotherhood that they're building is incredible, but I'm nervous because this is also a story where no one's safe. This book does not know plot, plot armor and I'm nervous about my, about my dears. A character will be built up and have their own story and arc and they'll be important and it's not some side character. I mean, yes, they are a side character, but it's not some like, okay, you're fodder. It's like, no, okay, I'm invested in you now and then you're just beheaded in a second. It's just like, <gasps> things happen so fast. A character that I was, that I just feel for so much, uh, I'm not sure how to say her name. Kikumi would probably be how I would say it, who's just kind of caught in between this war, who's caught in between this, these, this horrible situation where she's been raised to, to be something, to do something, and then, and then when she's 
forced to do to play this role there just was no good answer for her there was no good way for her as you can see I'm very invested <laughs> I'm so invested in the story and I'm really genuinely nervous for these characters because characters go through so much and I'm with them and I'm so invested in them and then they're gone they're snuffed out and that is what war is isn't it I don't know oh my goodness I'm just I'm so <sighs> invested in this book more of what I was talking about before, the pacing, the wonky, odd pacing. I was talking to Jimmy about this, and I think what I said to him, and he said that he thinks that this is correct, but neither of us is really sure, is that we're pretty sure that Ken Liu started with short stories, and then this is his this this is him dipping his toes into uh, a novel format, and that's how it reads because there's a lot of individual arcs that read like. This book reads sometimes like a collection of short stories that have an overarching plot. And when I say sometimes, I mean that's definitely how it reads. <laughs> so there will be these individual character arcs that begin and end within a few pages, and it's almost like you just got your whole story just there, and now we're starting another little mini arc, and then another little mini arc. So the structure is weird. It doesn't read like I'm accustomed to reading in my novels, but there's something really charming about it because it's being done so well, because Ken Liu is so oh effective in these little mini arcs and because there is this overarching story that I'm so invested in I and and it's not it's not exactly like that because there are characters that have that are in the larger arc that don't feel like they're having mini arcs but they do feel like they have many short stories that are contributing to their larger arc is any of this making sense but there's something very charming about it normally I would think that that would be something that would completely turn me off to a story but because Ken Liu is so good at this it works it's just a unique different storytelling style for me again I've heard that the sequels especially book two are so much better than book one so I wonder if maybe he kind of smoothed out his storytelling in novel format and that's partially what makes them a little bit more readable for a lot of people but I personally am really enjoying the charm of just a different type of writing in still such a such an effective story and I'm so invested I'm so invested I'm so ferociously invested in this book that I don't know I might just spend the day doing nothing but reading kind of sounds amazing when you love a book this Welcome to my latest obsession. Oh my goodness, this book was so good. We talked about the plot, we talked about some of the characters, we talked about pacing and very unique writing style. Let's talk, let's just gush now. This book is phenomenal. It took me through so many intense emotions. These characters go through so much in this story. It really, this book really, oh my goodness, okay. This book focuses a lot on war, the consequences of war, how war changes a person, um, the consequences and the effects of power, how that changes a person, the, the repeat, the way that history repeats itself. It just, oh, it focuses on brotherhood it's it focuses on individual characters rises and falls uh, many many situations and scenarios that these characters go through that really 
influences their decisions and shapes who they become. As I watched these characters rise and fall, as I watched these characters be shaped by the world and the circumstances that they're under, as I watched so many things happen, I mourned with them, I celebrated with them, I, I was so affected by this book. I was so heavily affected by this book, just around every corner. I never wanted to put the book down. I mean, I couldn't, I, this is a book that needs to be read slowly and needs to be read, like you have to pay attention to, and really take it in to really get out of it because Kin Lu doesn't mince words. He doesn't go on tangents. He is laser focused in the story that he wants to tell, which is partially what sometimes makes his pacing feel a little bit wonky and feel a little bit like, wow, we just kind of breezed past some really essential things, but it's because he knows what he wants to tell, he knows what he wants to say, and he's there, and you better track with him. It's not a casual read by any, by any means, but it is such a good one. This book is such a tragedy. I mean, any war story I think should be a tragedy, and any story that deals with the the impact of of a kingdom having to rise up and fight for itself or many kingdoms having to rise up and fight for itself will include tragedy and this story felt so historical it felt so real each of the islands each of the the different regions that we see that we visit are so they're dripping with history on their own each individually i just i know the landscape of of this world world. And with that, too, this story, while it's technically fantasy, it reads like a history. It reads like a true history, is what I want to say. And I think that this was based on the Han Dynasty, um, or, or loosely inspired by... I'm not positive on that one, which maybe is partially why it feels so historical and so true and so real. I feel like I'm reading a really, really cohesive and well-written nonfiction of a very important moment in history. I don't know. I don't know. I love it so much. It's one of those books that doesn't follow typical structures or writing styles or pacing styles. It doesn't really do very much that's typical, so go into it just with your hands open, willing to accept something very different, but then just enjoy it. My Malazan fans, you got you gotta try this one. You gotta go for this one. Not because it's not because it's exactly like Malazan or uh, as good as Malazan. I've only read one book, but I do think that there's a lot of thematic similarities, and I think that you'll like it. But not just Malazan fans. If Malazan intimidates you, still maybe give it a go because. I'm gonna be talking about the series. I didn't even talk about the gods. So there's so many morally gray characters. Like, more, mm, no character is like the hero of the story. Everybody is just very human. They have their own plights. They have their own hurdles. They have their own moments of failure. You have characters that you're rooting for. You're rooting for with all your heart and they just, they can't, meet the potential that you see in them. They just, they never, mm -hmm. And then other characters that they do meet the potential and then they stumble and they climb back up and it's just so good. But then you also have the gods that are a part of this story. Very, very light on the fantasy, at least here in book one. But then you have the gods who are participating, who are in the background, who are moving and who are influencing, but you're never entirely sure how much they're influencing or what they're doing. Or every now and then you'll, you'll watch something play out and then you'll kind of peek behind the curtain and see that the gods were actually at hand here and it'll make you rethink everything and the meaning behind it all. Y'all, it's just really good. It was such a good book. It, I can't believe that a story written in the way that this is written it, it had me so emotionally invested. It's so good. It was so good. Just believe me. I will be reading that book two next month. Absolutely true. I have a couple of buddy reads that I, uh, that I've already committed to, that I've already scheduled, so I have to do those first and then I'll be jumping into book two immediately and I will love it and I'm confident of that. I'm also, I'm, I'm also starting Malazan book six 
next month, at the end of next month. You know what? It's fine. I'm reading excellent books and I'm loving it. I'm making good choices. It doesn't matter that a lot of them are tragedies, right? I'm gonna keep my sanity. I'm not gonna have a villain arc. I also read some Yona. I think I read three volumes this week. I'll put it, put the volume that I just finished on the screen. We got a flashback this week, which I uh, didn't think I would like. I didn't feel like I needed a flashback. We already go pretty wide with this story. I didn't need to go even wider, but <laughs> was I wrong? I loved this flashback. It added so much context. It did such an excellent, excellent job at bringing out a story that I didn't know I needed that in the in that story, in the telling of that story, unraveled so much that was important for the main story. It was fantastic to read. Now we're back into the main story. Things are really moving fast. Um, things are really building up. I'm about to be caught up and I think I'm going to catch up at a point that is going to be an interesting place to stop because <laughs> I feel like we're building up so much right now. But certain characters that I really, really want to be together are coming together again, which makes me so happy. Yona is standing her ground to people who need to be stood up to. A new antagonist has been introduced, which happens all the time with this series. We have a lot of mini antagonists, but a new one has been introduced that is very intriguing because she's a wild card to put it lightly, but she also has a certain sickness that we've seen repeatedly through the series that's acting differently in her. So does she actually have the sickness? Why is it treating her differently? Why is it affecting her sanity when it affects no one else's sanity? I'm confused and I'd like to know more. We're at the point in the story now where I'm so intrigued and things are starting to come together so much that I just want to keep reading and figure out what's going on. I just want some answers in the best way possible. So I'm having a great time with Yona too. Oh, I've also been reading The Wager, which is a book that I talked about in the Come Book Shopping With Me haul. I've been reading it, um, but it's going to be in a different video, a different reading vlog themed reading vlog, so look out for that. I'm reading from the New York Times bestselling list. I, that happens to be on the list. When I looked up the list, it was there, which is just a super convenient coincidence for me, so that's going over there. Okay, bye!